How's it going everybody? John McLennan here. Hope you're having a great day and in today's video I'm going to show you how to play Beast of Burden by the Rolling Stones on guitar. I'm going to break down this intro section in today's guitar lesson. We're going to learn that classic riff, then we'll move into the verse. We're also going to learn the chorus chord progression as well and talk about some soloing tips for playing over this chord progression. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. We post brand new videos every single day and I really appreciate you hitting the thumbs up. You're getting this information completely for free and hitting the thumbs up just helps out guitar players all over the world. That's the goal of this channel is to help you get better at guitar. All right, with that said, let's jump into the lesson. Let's learn how to play Beast of Burden by the Rolling Stones on guitar. In this guitar lesson, I'm gonna take you through the main sections of this song. We're gonna learn that intro guitar part. We'll cover the verse and the chorus as well. Then we're also gonna talk about soloing over this progression a little bit. So let's start off with the intro. For the intro, we're gonna play this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> some tricky moves going on here and the basic progression let's talk about that first we've got an E to a B then a C sharp minor then an A so those are sort of the chords and again you could play these right with open position chords like that but what sounds like the recording is this sound here where you start on actually a B chord and this is a, a trickier chord if you haven't played thumb chords before but you're gonna play the seventh fret of the low E then mute the A string and play nine eight seven on the D the G and the B strings so you're gonna mute the A string and the high E and then you're gonna take your third finger and just like pop it down to where it makes this little E triad. See that? Then you're gonna go back to the B. So it's like B real quick, hammer to E, then E, B. Three and four and one and two and three and. and then you switch on the and to three to that B chord. And one and two and then we're going to take that B chord up two frets, but we're going to make it a minor chord. So what we'll do is we'll play thumb on the low E, ninth fret, then 11th fret on the D string, 9-9 nine, nine on G and B. C sharp minor. Then we hammer to an A chord like this. This is a really cool little part. This is hammering from the 9th to the 11th fret on the D string. And then you plant down this triad, which is 11, 9, 10, on those same three strings, the D, the G, and the B strings. And that's the final part, which gets you to the A chord, which takes you through the progression. So it's like B to E, B, C sharp minor, and again, so I'm going, I'm starting up with a pickup on the and of four, four, and one, and two, and three, and, and on three I'm just muting, doing like a, a scratch strum, and then I'm coming back up on the and of three on the B chord, four, and one, and two, C sharp minors on the and of four, four, and one, and two, and three, and, and then that's hammering on the and of two to beat three to make that A chord there. So four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. So that's that main riff there. A 
Okay, now when we leave this verse section to go to the chorus. Am I rich enough? Um, so when the melody goes to that next section, this is a six bar section here for the first chorus, and we're gonna play. Just like this B chord, this Hendrix style thumb chord, thumb on the low E fifth fret, and then mute the A string, you've got seven, six, five on the D, the G, and the B strings. And I'm muting the high E as well. You could play it if you want to bar all the way, but I like just a four note chord there. Now, what's going to happen here is each chord is going to last four counts. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, switch to Am I rich enough? I'm not too blind to see. Okay, so what's going on here is an A to an E over G sharp. And I play this chord with the thumb on the fourth fret of the low E, then mute the A string, six, Six on D, four on G, and five on B. So this is again that it's a similar try that we saw, right? It's that chord from the riff. We're just going to relocate it to where our first finger is on the fourth fret, and then the thumb is going to go on the fourth fret as well. So it's like an E chord, but it has the third in the bass, and that gives you a nice little a slight change, right? Am I rich enough? I'm not too blind. So we'll do that two times. So it's A, two, three, four, E over G sharp, A, E over G sharp. Then we go to two bars of a B. And then sometimes, you know, Keith plays very much in the moment, you know, so it's going to be different every time. So sometimes he's he's doing a sus there, like this B. That pinky can go on. It could just be like two bars of B sus, or it could be a bar of B sus to a bar of B, or it could be just kind of noodling around with that pinky, like... Listen to the recording because each time it's a little different. But the but the main chord there is B. So it's A, two, three, four, E over G sharp. A E over G sharp. B. And I'll add the sus. And then riff. to solo over this progression. Now I just played it into my looper pedal so you could hear it. Now let's talk about like scale choices that you can play. This progression, all these chords are diatonic or within the key of E. So a great place to start is like an E pentatonic scale, an E major pentatonic. That would look like that. And there's even a line in there where during the solo there's a lick that's like that literally just climbs up that pentatonic. And then we can also think about the melody. melody right there is totally a pentatonic melody. So that would be the first scale choice that I would choose to play over this. So I'll give an example of that.
as you can see, I'm just noodling around and I'm taking bits of the melody and then maybe a line from that I transcribed from the recording and then also just mixing that in with some typical pentatonic simple melodies that I like playing and I'm just feeling in the moment. I hope that helps get you started playing this song. Grab a telly. I also am using a little bit of a phaser sort of sound to get close to the recording. So if you want to dial in that tone, that'll help you get closer to the sound as well. As my gift to you today for checking out this video, in the description below you can get a PDF that's over a hundred pages long all about soloing. It's a book I wrote called Melodic Expressions. If you want to support me, you can buy that book on the iTunes bookstore for $15, or you can download it for free at the link below. Have fun practicing this song, and we'll see you next time.